I need the sound. We're just gathering. Got it. I'm just getting my sound. Can you hear me? Church is still, people are still hanging around from church. Oh, okay. oh that's great. That's great. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, we'll just take a turn right there. We'll test your connection as soon as the crowd leaves. Okay, can you hear me? Pardon? I'm able to talk with her. Yeah. Uh oh, right behind you. Oh, watch out. Almost there. Almost there. Yeah, we're good. I'm just tired. Steve, we have Amy and Carolee's online. Okay, well, that's right. So, yeah, we, just, we have three. Yeah, yeah. That's great. That's great. I don't know. Yeah. You're going to be doing trouble. Yeah, I'll, okay. I'll get up and do a little bit of trouble. And then I'll answer. Okay, it's about 11 o'clock, and uh, we are going to phase into our. Uh, Sunday school class together, which is uh, crossing the bridge. Um, just want to encourage you. I I will say, even to my own chagrin, the, the coffee, coffee over there is dead. So if you want more coffee, you're gonna have to go down the hallway and get some. Uh, and uh, so I want to encourage you to do that. 
Uh, I'll give one more second here as we kind of get our act together, and then we'll get started. Yeah, I have. Oh. <laughs> you want to start them? <laughs> So I'd love to invite our, um, our panel uh, participants, so if they would, would mind coming on up. I think there's actually going to be only four. Should we leave a seat up here for you? I'll be over here. Okay. Okay, are we are we taping? We are live. That's right. So anything that is said now can be held against us. Uh, <laughs> well, first of all, I'd just like to welcome you to our session today on crossing the bridge. Uh, thinking about what, what, what's the subtitle for this one? It's reflecting on how we live missionally. And after all the stuff I just said about subtitles in my sermon, that's pretty bad, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Um, we have been uh, working together over many weeks, reflecting on what does it mean to engage and live missionally. Uh, and the assumption, there have been a couple of key things that we, the, uh, or a couple of, I should say, not assumptions, but objectives. One of them has been to connect into the deep uh, sense of mission that has always animated this community. Uh, this community has had a long-standing sense that part of what it meant to be a community was to be engaging the world uh, in and through uh, various kinds of missional practice. Uh, the other major goal was that I wanted to, and, and uh, I think Elaine also, we wanted to kind of spark uh, ways for people in our community to think creatively about how could they engage missionally. And so we plan to have then uh, two weeks, and this is our first week, of that, uh, of panelists, uh, from folks who are in our community, who are just gonna share the ways the that ways they are that involved. They are involved. Uh, they, uh, they, some, some of them are gonna be involved, involved in our community, community. they're gonna describe what that's, what that's like. like. Um, others, others of them, though, are involved in organizations, organizations that are outside. outside. Some, of some of those organizations you're going to be familiar with. Some of those organizations you're not going to be familiar with. with. And, in and in some sense, that's, that's precisely the point. The point. There, are so there are so many different, different ways, ways to engage, to engage and, plug and plug in and, and to figure out what does it mean, mean to live out that call, that call you know, the you work know, the that God is already doing in the world, to discern what that is and participate in it. And that's why we wanted to invite folks who were doing this in very different ways. Uh, before, uh, before I, I kind of turn it over to Elaine, Elaine I, want I want to just say a quick word of prayer, and, uh, and then I'll let Elaine introduce uh, our panelists, all of whom are up here or on the screen. So let's pray together. Lord, we thank you that you are a gracious and living God who speaks, who calls to us, who embraces us, and who also sends us out into the world um, to be the hands and feet of Jesus to be your hands and feet in this world. Help us, Lord, to have discerning ears, um, to listen for where your spirit is blowing and where it might be leading us. And please, we pray, Lord, be with our speakers today as they share. Bless them and help us, uh, Lord, to have open hearts as we hear what they are engaged in, in your name. And all these things we say in your name. Amen. Just want to make sure this one works. Okay. Does this one work? Yep. Okay. So I'm going to get this one to you first. You can hold it. So good morning. Um, the format for this morning, like uh, Christian had said, is to have an opportunity to hear from some of our friends within our community. Um, we have Pete Welsh and um, Steve Merriman, and they're going to share about their involvement here at church. They're here Wednesday night. They're here on other nights 
in the kitchen. You might not see them always, but they are here. And then we have Amy Stark, who is here on behalf of Oasis and uh, Oasis for Youth, um, and specifically Matthew's Closet. Amy is back in the closet every week, if not on a daily basis, maybe sometimes twice a day, but um, she is there organizing that so that our youth who come and um, visit that closet have a great experience, but she'll get into that more. And then we have Carol Lee Randall, um, who's joining us via Zoom from Arizona. And um, she will be speaking on behalf of her involvement with Alzheimer's and specifically giving voice, which has now been brought into Colonial. So with that, each of our um, panelists have three questions that they've been pondering. So um, Pete, do you want to share a little bit about your involvement here at church and all that you do? Uh, yeah, uh, I'm Pete Welch. I, uh, I'm probably the, the most recent person on the Wednesday night meal, uh, uh, cooking and uh, serving and cleaning up. I was uh, retired a few years ago, and uh, Dave Pinsky is, uh, uh, has been doing that for many years. He and I um, have known each other for a while on other volunteer things. we both come out of the construction industry. So I knew Dave from working on things uh, around Colonial as a volunteer, and um, and he uh, he just asked me, "Hey, would you like to join this Wednesday night group?" Um, I thought, "Yeah, I'll I'll try that." I was familiar with the kitchen, uh, working on retreat things uh, over the years. I I knew how to turn on the dishwasher, uh, and uh, so I did, and it. Just it just got better every week. Um, it uh, that's really that's really I don't know if I have to say more than that. That uh, it, it it was a wonderful group. Uh, Chef Jeff Riley um, was a contemporary of mine. We both grew up in South Minneapolis and realized we knew all kinds of people the, the, between each other. And but the group that had already been together for quite some time um, was just a great group of people to serve with um, so that uh, the serving uh, it, it, it fit real quick um, and uh, I hope to get back to it <laughs> when we keep going um, that's that's my spiel <laughs> do you have a specific experience or experiences that you can share with us in terms of how this has uh, impacted you? Um, one stands out. I, I had a niece who passed away a couple of years ago and uh, in uh, Denver, but my brother grew up here, and when they came back here for um, a, uh, uh, a celebration of her life in Minneapolis with his friends and such, um, Colonial graciously offered this facility for that service for my extended family and his friends and my kitchen crew folks, they all came that day and they put it all together. So that was, that, yeah, that was a good one. A big draw on community of friends. Yeah. Yep. That's great. Well, if you want to pass the mic Oops. to Steve. So Steve, similarly, you're involved here on Wednesday nights. So do you want to talk a little bit about how you got involved? Well, I, I was recruited by Barb uh, Zavala, and I, I helped Don Heinrich. Don was the uh, dishwasher. And uh, I, he left for Boston, <laughs> and, and I was recruited for the primary dishwasher. Uh, so, do you have any specific experience? I mean, you've been doing this for a while, so um, any specific experience that stands out that has been meaningful to you? Well, I, I just appreciate all the people that have volunteered on Wednesday evenings. Um, some have uh, 
left the group and, and some have passed on. Uh, miss those. Uh, it, it, it's, it's a wonderful experience to, to help on Wednesday evenings and, and to uh, assist the church in any way I can. So how would you say this experience in terms of your involvement here at church and your, like I said, both you and Peter behind the scenes, um, how has this impacted you in terms of just your faith, being a part of your faith community? Well, I think it's, it's strengthened my faith. Uh, I, I think uh, it's been helpful to, uh, to serve and to find a meaningful experience uh, serving the church. Thank you to both of you. Um, also want to make note that uh, there are sheets, well, there were sheets of paper. I have some more. But um, if you have some uh, questions um, for any of our panelists, Paige, would you be willing? Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, if you want to pass the mic to Amy. Oh, perfect. Christian's great. Um, so, Amy's involvement is a little different in terms of uh, uh, how she maybe came to be a part of Oasis. So, mm -hmm. I'll let Amy tell that story. Sure. But before I tell my story, I need to brag about Steve a little bit. It's, I've got Go the ahead. mic, so I've got the power. Go ahead. So, our dear Steve is usually the last to leave after, after every event here at church. He makes sure that everything is completely cleaned up. And for those of you who have done kitchen cleanup in your own homes, it's like you're, you're the most tired. You're the most um, kind of, you know, just ready to be done. And Steve makes sure everything is completely where it needs to go back to. Every table has been cleaned up. It's this incredible perseverance and serve an attitude with love and gentleness that I just, I am so appreciate. And our, our church is so blessed because of him. And, you know, everybody else has left the building and gone on to their life. And Steve has made sure that it's all set for the next event. So I just needed to share that. Okay, so Oasis for Youth. So during um, the Blessing Initiative, um, advertisement my friend Jane Wilson who had she and I had served on council together and had not known each other previous to that so our council bonding time was sweet she had a relationship with um, the board of directors of Oasis for Youth and had a vision and she first asked me to just kind of pray about that which I did with all sorts of joy and she wanted to um, write up a grant for the Blessing Initiative for this organization. So I learned a little bit about it from her and from doing a little research. And um, as she's writing this initiative, she, she learns that you know she has to do a little promo video and kind of come up with some key people that are gonna be a part of it. So she asked me and I said, okay, a little hesitantly because there there was just a lot of unknowns. But there were two things that sparked me to say yes pretty quickly. One was the demographic for Oasis of Youth is 16 to 24 year olds. And these are young people that for the most part are couch surfing in their, in their world. They've either been kicked out of their homes or left for various reasons and they're pretty much under the radar um, in their schools and in their community. And they kind of want to stay that way because there's probably some underlying issues. And Oasis for Youth has um, come alongside them with counselors and services. And they're an organization, they're, they're still out of um, uh, church in Bloomington, and they wanted to expand their reach into Richfield and Edina. 
And that was Jane's spark to bring it here to Colonial to ask for money from Blessing and to, to create um, Matthew's Closet, which is a resource room here at Colonial. So we did the video, you know, the history can go on, but we ended up getting a nice sum of money and to help support this organization. And fast forward to last spring, and the church in Bloomington had a huge flood, and it flooded their resource room. So we quickly, and this is where I really kind of came into to being with Matthew's Closet, because I, on one of my other passions is the Assistance League thrift store, and I'm pretty good at dealing with items that need to be sorted and handed out and dealt with. So we quickly took over a space here at Colonial and created Matthew's Closet and filled it with clothes and um, some food items, some toiletries, shoes, baby items, and created a space for the counselors and the caseworkers to bring clients and shop our store. And not only they, they would come and get some things that some of them even would take showers down in the showers, down in the um, other wing. And so we found towels and toiletries and made a good little spa experience for those clients. And it's just been so incredibly rewarding. And here's the most rewarding part right now for me. I, we have no client um, uh, interface. We're just serving in the back scenes of this, just kind of like Steve and Peter beat with the kitchen. But when I come into the closet and it's messy, I get so happy <laughs> because that means people have come in. When I see empty hangers, oh my goodness, that is like the best. We got huge donation of coats and, and winter items through our um, emerging generations, brand new wonderful things oh my goodness it was just so great they just just showered fabulous things onto the closet and so we hung them all up and made just it was looked so great and to come in and have empty hangers and scarves and mittens and hats gone and some boots gone oh you oh it just it just filled me with so much joy um because, you know, those of us who work in a closet, we pray over the items. We want these to go to, to the right people. We want those, those young adults to feel loved. We want them to know that people really care about them. Um, and many of them struggle with that. So it is, we want that place to be filled with um, comfort and peace and, and God's love. And that's what we're able to do. So you've shared a lot about your experience. Is there something specific outside of seeing the empty hangers and a messy closet that stands out? Um, I think the whole idea that, that God had set this all up, that we would get this closet created here at Colonial that the planning was happening before the flood in Bloomington and that we could do it so quickly so there was no lag time for all of those young adults, those caseworkers that bring them. Um, that brings me just so much joy that, that people were listening to the Holy Spirit, followed their, their um, prompting and, and made it happen. Because if it hadn't, if we hadn't done, listened and, and taken the call and had this, this passion for the blessing initiative, I mean, think of all the steps previous that happened so that we could do this. There would have been this huge gap. And especially during pandemic, um, these, these young adults have really, it's been harder and harder. And they couldn't do a lot of face-to-face -face interview and they couldn't, there just was a lot of things that they needed even more so, and we could create that because we cared, and God called us to care. Yeah, I'm hearing the theme about God calling us to care, and so obviously that's had some impact on your 
individual faith as you went into it you probably saw it as one experience but you have now been blessed in many ways absolutely outside of absolutely just a closet exactly yeah just like with pete and steve it's not just dishes it's not just serving others there's a lot more that goes into that so thank you mm -hmm. So we have Carol Lee Randall. Can you hear okay? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yep, yep. Okay. Great, great. Good. Good. All right. So Carol Lee, if you could share a little bit, because you're you've kind of got two pieces in terms of your involvement with Alzheimer's, and then in addition to having uh, now the giving voice being brought here. So if you could provide a little bit of backdrop on, on those two areas of involvement for you. Okay, I would love to. Um, I'm greeting you from Arizona, and I must say that it's gonna be 93 here today. And I looked at the Minnesota <laughs> tent and saw that it was gonna be a little chillier. So, and my church starts at 10. It's, um, um, I will be leaving right from here to go to my church down here. So. Anyway, I have had to jot down a few notes because I could go on forever about my involvement with Alzheimer's Association and then more recently with Giving Voice and the Sing for Life, which is a choir that I have started down here in Arizona, which is patterned after what we are doing at, at Colonial with our Crosstown um, Choir. But I'm gonna go back a little bit because um, I'm going to tell you why volunteerism is so important and why it has been so important to me over many, many years. And because I could go on for about 30 minutes and I'm only have six minutes, I thought that I would jot down a few notes to share with you guys. So I've always been a volunteer and I started when I was a Girl Scout growing up in Atlanta, Georgia, and we used to go down to the inner city and be with the people down there, the young girls down there and help them and go back and forth with them. And so those were my early, early, early days as a volunteer. And then once we moved to Minnesota, which was way back in early seventies and we joined Colonial Church, um, I became really involved at the church in many different areas. Um, I was involved with the mission board, the youth board, the deacon board, the church council, serve on the building and design committee. Um, and we, that has been my background because Colonial Church has made those volunteer opportunities available for me. On the, bishop, on the mission board, we visited many, many people that had asked us for a donation or for money. And um, getting out into the community and doing that on behalf of Colonial was really um, the beginning of my volunteer career, shall I say. So from there, um, I was involved with the Junior League of Minneapolis and that led me to a lot of volu <clears throat> excuse me, volunteer opportunities. And, um, but things pretty much changed. <clears throat> when um, back in 1989, at the age of 72, my dad was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. And so that kind of changed my path into my volunteer world. Um, <clears throat> I, went, I remember I went knocking on the door of the Alzheimer's Association in Bloomington. There were two people that worked there, the executive director and the development director. And I asked, was there anything for adult children? And they, suggest, they said, yes, we have support groups for adult children of people with who their parents have been diagnosed with Alzheimer's. And so I joined that group and um, it was extremely helpful to me. And I would suggest that for anybody dealing with a parent or a friend or a husband or a wife who might have this disease, this Alzheimer's disease or some form of dementia. Um, anyway, that was extremely helpful to me. And from that, that led me into being invited to sit on the board of directors of the Alzheimer's Association, which I did for six years and then um, 
have been involved there probably for the last 30 years. I have been uh, worked on their fundraising, their galas for the last 25 years. In fact, May 21st is our, our 30th gala and I am happy to invite several tables to come and hear about that. We were able to, prior to COVID, the year before COVID, we were able to raise a million dollars for research in Alzheimer's and we had a thousand people at our event down at the depot. So anyway, that's just been one of my passions and I've worked on that for a long, long, long time. Um, but now I'm so excited about a choir called Giving Voice. Giving Voice was founded six or seven, six and a half years ago by, um, Mary, by Mary Burchard Leonard, who had been the former executive director of the Alzheimer's Association and Marja Trushko. And they decided that one of the wonderful things about singing is everybody can do it. And people with dementia, early to mid stages of dementia, they love to sing. And if they've sung all their lives, they never forget the music that they learned as a child or as a young adult or as an adult. And so Mary and Marge started giving voice and it was in um, with McVeigh was their backing. And there are now four choruses going on in the Minneapolis and St. Paul area. And um, one of those is here at Colonial and it's called the Crosstown Choir, uh, Giving Voice Choir. We meet on Thursday mornings at 10 o'clock and it is open to everybody. It's not just for people and their care partners, people that are suffering with dementia, but it's also for anybody who loves to sing and everybody is invited. And um, I, I who cannot even carry a tune sang in the choir this year at Colonial. And um, it was a wonderful experience for me. I didn't know alto from soprano, but David, our wonderful leader here has helped me through that. And I must say, I think it's kind of fun being able to sing now. So um, anyway, um, that is the story of what's going on here. We had a wonderful concert in December at Colonial. Uh, we had over a hundred people come and listen. We had about 25 people in our choir. And um, I welcome anybody or anybody you know that loves to sing to come and join this group. And then since that, I here in Arizona three years brought Sing for Life, which is another, um, which is part of giving voice, but we have a different name down here. And we now have about 25 pe people meeting at Pinnacle Presbyterian Church, which is my church here away from home. And that has been really successful and, and very meaningful to the people who sing in the choir. So from that, I've been invited to be on the um, national board of the Giving Voice, which is in Minneapolis. And we have 47 choirs across the United States and in Europe as well. So it's grown in the last six and a half years from one chorus, which met at McVale, to four here in the cities and then 47 across the country. So it's been a joy to have it um, here, uh, to have it in Arizona as well as in Minneapolis. So that's kind of my story. Um, I love being a volunteer. It's brought joy to my life um, and colonial. Um, in the past 50 years that I've been a member here has given me all kinds of wonderful chances to be a volunteer. And I would recommend that for everybody. So that's my story. <laughs> Thank you, Carolee, for sharing your story. Uh, a little bit more to that. Um, when you first got involved and take it now to where you are. Um, how would you say that this has impacted you over the years? Well, I mean, it's impacted my life, my family, my friends, everybody. I've been able to reach out to my church friends who have been involved um, 
both in Giving Voice, Sally Mannard, um, Chris Henderson, Barb Halverson here at Colonial have been amazing um, in putting this all together, the choir here. And um, for me here in Arizona, I've been able to um, recruit a number of people that it's become very meaningful in their life too. So I think, you know, just being a friend, being um, someone who understands people with dementia and people, I watched my dad over a nine year period. My mom took care of him every day until the last six months of his life when he went into memory care. And um, it just changes you if you are involved with someone with this particular disease. And the Alzheimer's Association has been amazing in, in, within our community. It, um, it's located here in Edina over at the Braemar Center. If anyone needs any help, knows friends or anyone who needs any help in that area, they have wonderful care consultants and they can offer all kinds of um, places to go for help. And so um, I guess I don't know if that answers your question, but uh, I hope so. Thank you, Carolee. A um, couple of things I want to go back to. One, Amy has offered, if anybody is interested after the class, to be able to see Matthew's closet. Um, it's somewhat small, but um, there's enough room to stand outside of it and come in and, and be able to see um, what a fantastic opportunity it is for the youth at Oasis to be able to have those resources available to them. So, um, so Amy's more than willing to take you all there. It's just over by the back door. <laughs> so um, I wanna come back to Pete um, on something because if his partner, Dave Pinsky was here, this would have been brought up about the tiny house because that is another one of those things that was somewhat quietly stated in terms of getting involved, right? <laughs> it was, we're gonna do this tiny house and it's gonna take two weeks and um, it, it's gonna take X amount of resources and you're gonna have volunteers sign up. And, but if it weren't for Pete and Dave and Adam Thompson, who's not here, but those three worked tirelessly on um, that initiative. So do you want to share a little bit about that and the, who's got the mic, um, and the impact that maybe has had as a result of your involvement and being tapped on the shoulder for that? Or maybe you volunteered totally without being tapped on the shoulder. <laughs> um. Uh, it was my pleasure. Um, uh, it, it fit. It, it, it wasn't a stretch. It was working with those other, uh, with Adam and, and Dave, like you said, um, the other professionals that knew, how do you do this? How do you, what do you put together? How do you do it uh, fairly quickly? But how do you also um, involve the most amount of other people? And, and I got to say, I, uh, years ago, working with Habitat for Humanity things, they impressed that upon you is this isn't about you. you. You might know how to cut these things and nail them together. This is about everybody else who will be here and then want to come back. So I, 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 I kept that, that, that idea. It's uh, the, the and, and, and fortunately, at Colonial Church, over all those years, every time you'd reach out and put a, um, a sign-up sheet in the hallway, you came. So it, it, it is colonial. Um, and, and being one of the people who can uh, have them put their name on the clipboard or uh, then uh, and maybe point at what they would do the day they came, uh, that's, that's pretty easy stuff. Uh, it's, uh, it's way more about... Uh, all the people that show up. Thank you. I'm sure that 
that was probably more so um, one of those that going into it wasn't quite the same experience as after looking at it now, what was accomplished in that window of time. And again, had it not been for your expertise and Dave's and Adam's, I don't know where we would have been. <laughs> so, uh, um, but uh, when I listen to all of these folks, um, there's a lot of themes that come out. Um, servant attitude, serving others, um, somewhat of God's direction, um, taking the call, whether it's a tap on the shoulder from a friend, first maybe starting out joining or uh, attending an event and then you see the excitement, or it's like uh, for Steve, um, that when Don went off to Boston, they needed somebody to backfill and Steve took the call. Um, and volunteering, just a common theme that whether it was starting out when you were a Girl Scout or just who you are, um, it just seems like there's this identifying a need and going fulfilling it. Um, and Pete's last comment, this isn't about you, but you're serving others, whether it's a team of people working on a house, a team of people back in the kitchen, a team of people putting together a choir. Um, again, the serving that goes on to the communities that these people have touched and not going into it necessarily with that in mind. So um, the other thing is the transformation that I think the involvement and volunteering brings the transformation it has over us and it's God's direction what again whether it's a tap on the shoulder or it's a friend that's asking you it's God working through those friends that bring us to these opportunities Christian did you want to say some I, I just came over to grab this because I think we want to open it if there's folks oh, who had okay. questions I just wasn't sure whether or not you wanted I wondered if Pete would just give us a little um, picture of the results of the tiny house. Uh, uh, what, what was the purpose and what has happened with it? My understanding, and I, I haven't talked to them for uh, about seven, eight months, but uh, it joined um, a handful of other houses that were, uh, that were built at the same point in time and um, a church that with with land and the ability to uh, put it forward for that use in uh, St. Paul, um, just uh, just east of downtown St. Paul. Uh, it's my understanding it's there. And they also then had, uh, they were they offered to open up their building uh, for showers and kitchen and such. So a, a great congregation did that. And uh, so it resides with, I think, four or five others at, at last I, that I knew. Other questions? This isn't a question so much as a comment. Um, it's great to see the four of you there. I know one of you, Carolee Randall. Hi, Carolee. Um, yeah. I know her very well, and I know her story about Alzheimer's, but the other three of you, I don't know, I haven't known anything about what you're doing in these areas, and I'm just struck by the fact that we've got a church full of people, probably all of whom have some interests that we don't know anything about. Um, I, I'm, I remember when Jack Fortin was our minister here, we went through an exercise where we all wrote up on butcher paper uh, the things that we were involved with, and then they stretched that paper all up and down the hall. And the, the list, the cumulative list of all the things that the people in our congregation are involved with was just incredible. 
and, and very encouraging. You know, sometimes you feel like, you know, maybe I'm the only person doing this. Well, you're the only person doing this, but then people are doing a million other things. And the, the breadth of the reach of people in our church is just really great. And I, this is a step in that direction, and I wish we could do more to, uh, to dramatize that. So thank you, Jeff. I really appreciate that comment. Um, that is so true, that there is so much going on in this church and things that we don't know that people are involved with. Um, we're hoping to do something. We just don't know what that is quite yet, of being able to give that um, visual of all that is going on here. So. And be sure to come back next week, Jeff, because they, we will have more folks sharing in a similar fashion as well. Absolutely. Other questions, comments? Doesn't necessarily need to be a question as with Jeff. Sherry. I just wanted to say, um, I, I'm just blown away by, by these the word of all these things. What a precious thing. And you brought out, Elaine, how community is built and how God's name, Jesus' reputation is affected by this. But I, I was thinking when the guys were sharing about the kitchen, um, when I was a young mom overseas, I, I remember feeling so insignificant sometimes about my work. It wasn't big spiritual work like my husband's, blah, blah, blah. And um, one day I was reading, I think it was in Acts, and I don't remember the reference, but it said that when the apostles were too busy to take on, they saw that widows and uh, orphans, etc., weren't being fed well enough. And so instead of the apostles stopping their teaching, they decided that they would choose some men from the group of, of passionate Jesus followers to wait tables. And it said they had to be spirit-filled men. And it just gave me such a different view of my involvement in hospitality and child care that they were to be spirit-filled responsibilities and privileges. And I just bless all, all four of you for what you're doing. Thank you, Sherry. Other questions? I have Question. two questions for all four of you. <laughs> the, the, first, the first question really is a I think kind of a straightforward, I'd just be interested to hear your thoughts. Um, and I really appreciate, Carol Lee, you talking about how your own, like you, 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 volunteerism has just been really important to you. Like that's just built into your character and who you are. And I was thinking about this, that that is not always the case for all of us. And so if we are, if we are more shy or we are more hesitant, to get involved in something, what what might you say to someone like that? And this is not just for you, Carol. This is also for um, uh, you know our folks here in the room. Um, how do you overcome that initial sort of do I do this or not? Like what what maybe what drove you? I mean, I know for you know you've shared little bits and pieces, but if you put that into a piece of advice, how would you share that? Well, if I could just say a couple of things. I think when friends reach out to friends with what their passion is, then that often will get people involved. And as an example, Elgin Mannard about nine years ago said to me, he was then very active in an organization called Living Well Disability Services. We, we serve 42 group homes across the Minneapolis, St. Paul area, people with disabilities living in there. He was involved in that. He was actually on the board. And he said, Carolee, this is something that I think you would really like. And you know, when one of your best friends says to you, 
we need you, of course, you're going to be there. And so as a result, I ended up serving on that board for seven years, helping with their fundraising and their gala. My two boys now uh, deliver food every Friday to nine or 10 of the group homes across the Twin Cities. And so when a friend asks you and has a passion, oftentimes that will get you involved. And I had no involvement prior to Elgin Mannard saying to me, Carolee, we could really use you. And um, I think we need to reach out to our friends. I think we need to do that at Colonial Church. Um, I'm sorry, I keep referring to it. When you're a 50 year member of Colonial, it's hard to change the name right away. But um, I think we really need to reach out to our friends and say, this is something that you are needed here and we would love to have you be involved. And it doesn't matter if you're 15, if you're 30, if you're 80, it doesn't make any difference. I think we all need to answer the call. And I'd, I'd piggyback, That's those are perfect words, Carolee. Um, it, getting involved doesn't have to be a big thing. It's not a big commitment. Start out small, you know, offer to help hand out donuts after the service so you get to know some people. Um, I mean, it doesn't have to be a weekly commitment, a monthly commitment. It just start out and do a little something. And then it, it always... Um, grows and grows and grows. Um, and the more people, you know, the, the more you do kind of connect, then you connect with other people. And as I said, you know, I didn't know Jane before I said yes to council. And um, Ginny Jensen is part of Oasis. I did not, I've known Ginny, I've known who she is all these years and her dear um, bud who's gone, but I didn't know her. And now I know her and she knows me and my family and, um, God just keeps blessing us the more we get connected. And especially in this world right now, don't we need a whole lot more of that? So it doesn't have to be a big thing. Well, well I just think if you uh, share that with others that there's a need, a small need maybe to start with, that uh, people will respond and, and come and help. I think if you're in the, on the leadership side of something, ask. And then if you get asked, say yes. Even if, you, even if you're not that, if it's out of, you know, maybe you didn't do it before, but give it a shot. I, 40 years ago, Doug Grabham asked me to work in that kitchen. And Four years ago, Dave Pinsky asked me to do the same thing. So somebody who was there said, hey, want, you know, hey, you look like a fit for this. Why don't you try this? Well, then you're the, you're the other side of it. Take them up on it. <laughs> that was great. Uh, Molly, go ahead. You want to you have a question? Um, I, I don't know if I'm speaking for you, but um, and I, hi, Carol Lee, it's Molly. Hi, Molly. <laughs> Love you. Um, I, um, I have been more the beneficiary of many volunteers here than volunteering actually. But, but the volunteering is so much fun. And, and I think, uh, I, I don't know, maybe you don't notice that till you're in it, but it's also how you find friends when you come to Colonial. So it, I think it can be advertised as a friendship program. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Uh, but so here's my second question. And um, how much time are we? Ten minutes. Okay. I don't think this will take as long. I'll cut down the question. No subtitles. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm kind of putting on my my teaching minister hat, but also like just curious. Is there, when you think about, maybe it's the, one of the things that you talked about, and I know, Carol, you talked about a couple different things that you're involved in. Amy, you did the same. Um, Pete, you did the same. Is there one thing you kind of wish you had known before you got involved? And, I, and then part of my, that can be, this can be a kind of funny thing or whatever, but part of it's like, how can we equip you? How can we equip our congregation 
to feel empowered and ready to do, you know, to kind of engage in these things. Is, is, so is there anything that strikes you from that, from that question? Well, I, I would um, just say this one thing. I was, as I was putting this little talk together, I look back on all the volunteer opportunities I've had at Colonial Church. And um, I, I look back on Betsy Circle, that was many, many, many years ago. And we worked with Sabathany Baptist Church in the inner city. And um, we had an exchange program with that group down there. And I remember inviting, I think there were 18 of the ladies from the African-American community that came to my house for brunch. And it just opened up such an amazing conversation and a friendship that we all had. And I remembered that day, um, one of the ladies saw that I collected antiques and I had an, a bunch of things hanging on my wall. And she said, I have an old coffee grinder. I'd love to share it with you. And at our next gathering down at Sabathony, she brought me this beautiful coffee grinder, which I had hanging on my wall then for the next 20 years. And it's just that um, opening ourselves to meeting new people and doing new things and becoming involved with other organizations or other people of of that are different from us. I think that's what really is the, for me, that has been one of the most um, important things in my life. So my one thought, and I'm going back to Jack Fortin. <clears throat> um, he used to say, well, it's gonna be a friendly experiment. Mm -hmm. And that has stuck with me, not only in in big group settings, but, but personally, I think one of the things that we are in this community tend to be achievers. We want to do everything right. And we need to be open that it's, some mistakes might happen because we're just trying things out. And God takes everything we do and makes it for his purpose. And so we need to have grace upon grace, which is a statement that I say in my house a lot because I need mm -hmm. it the most. But we need to have grace and have that attitude when we're asking people to do things. Yeah, you know, we may not be able to get it right the first time, but we're gonna we're gonna give it a go. And that's definitely happened at the closet, and that's okay. I have one other thing because Molly Rauner is in the audience. Um, I remember working for the going away dinner for Arthur Rauner and, um, and the fact that the people from Christ Presbyterian Church offered to come over and serve at that going away dinner for Arthur just blew my mind because um, he, they wanted us to be all celebrate with Arthur in his going away, so they were the servants. And that's always stuck with me as something that was such an amazing, wonderful thing. And that really came through our fellowship through Curcio that we had all been involved in as a bunch of churches. So. Just, just one small comment. I, I don't think a person can always be totally prepared, but I think that if one lets the spirit lead them, that they will be prepared. Mm -hmm. I think Elaine maybe alluded to that we'll, there'll be some projects, there'll be some things, it's, it'll be coming up. <clears throat> and if you see that clipboard, sign up. Uh, that, that's my advice from, maybe I am got the clipboard, but, but maybe I'm gonna sign on it too. It, it really starts with you. Just uh, give it a shot, sign up and uh, show up, and that, that's it. <laughs> Christian, do you want to close us in prayer? First of all, I just think we should uh, give a round of applause to all of our panelists. Um, 
and obviously it's just take, thank you for taking the time out of your day for coming up and speaking to us and sharing your stories. Uh, it's not always super comfortable, but you have illumined us, you have encouraged us, you've warmed our hearts, and I hope that you've inspired our imaginations for getting involved, for signing that clipboard, for being willing to say yes when a friend or someone else encourages us. Uh, we will come back next week and we'll have an another panel of folks from within our congregation who will be sharing uh, their different experiences, uh, the different kinds of missional engagement that they have been involved in. And again, all of this precisely is for you, for us, for our church, to be inspired, um, to think creatively about what God's call for you and for us might be and might look like. And so I hope that you'll come back and join us next week. So let me say a prayer and also remind you that afterwards uh, you can go visit Matthew's Closet with Amy. Uh, let's pray together. Lord, we pray, uh, we, first of all, we give thanks to you for this day and the fellowship um, that you can feel right now. The sense of your spirit, um, the fact that we have these brothers and sisters who are sitting in front of us sharing their story the way that they have indeed been the hands and feet of Jesus in so many different ways in different people's lives. We pray that what we take from this, Lord, will be the question that we ask to ourselves, how can we be a neighbor also? Be with us now as you send us forth in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Carolee, thanks so much for joining us via Zoom. Appreciate I'm it. off to church, so off I have to. Church. to. <laughs> All right. We don't want you to be late. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you all. Have a great day. Thank you.